If you have been asking if healing is real, stick around and find out that healing is for real. And we don't mean maybe. My name is Tony. And I am Zin. And we are two witnesses and representatives of the miraculous gospel of healing. All right, welcome to the Miraculous Ooh. Gospel of Healing. I'm Tony Myers. And I am Zin El Fuego on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> on the mic. Today we're going to have a discussion that is always a hot topic. If you're mm. ever lacking for a topic, just, or if you want to, if you want to start a debate, <laughs> Just say the sovereignty of God <laughs> and the religiousness will come out with a stone winging. <laughs> That's and what I we're going to talk. Is God in control of this earth? Hmm. Where does sovereignty begin and end? Hmm. And I'm going to throw it off saying this. God is the creator of the universe. He formed the universe. He has the ultimate power that is without question. But there's that big old but. Everybody got a big old but. The thing is this, he gave control of the earth to man. Yes, he did. The heavens, oh, the heavens are the Lord's, mm. but the earth is man's. Mm. Mm -hmm. And we ain't even gone to the garden yet. We ain't gone there. <laughs> but yet, let's take a look at this. You cannot show me in any translation where our buddy Joshua, hmm. when, when he had the sun stop and stand still, where did he ask permission from God to do it? Yeah. Yeah. Elijah with the three separate accounts of 50 soldiers. Hmm. And he burned up the first two, right? <laughs> he did oh, not gosh. ask God. You know, it's got any And in fact, there was an angel that stopped him on the third time, which means, guess what? That was never God's will. Are we following? So, and in fact, Jesus totally shows that that wasn't his will when the, the, the sons of thunder, John and James, when they turned around and asked Jesus, Shall we do as Elijah did and call fire down from the heavens? Jesus' answer shows right away that Elijah burning up those people, those soldiers, was not in the plan. Or Elijah uh, with, this, with the uh, prophets of Baal. Right. So, guess what? It... It is, God always works through a human being. Always. Now, sometimes we don't see how, at, but at some point, he always works through a human being. And 100%. in fact, that's why Jesus became human. And that's the biggest one. 
Because if, yeah. <laughs> if, if he was sovereign, then there would be no need for Jesus to be born. Right. He, he could fix it from the sky. <laughs> exactly right. Let's look at Moses and the Red Sea. Wow, that's a big one. God, Moses is making this big old speech. Just stand right here. Everybody <laughs> just stay right here. I'm going to fight for it. See what our God will do. Yeah. God calls Moses and says, Moses, come here. <laughs> what in the world are you doing? <laughs> Why aren't you telling these people to move forward? <laughs> and you start off telling Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Yes. That's the first thing you tell him. Why what? are you crying to me? So who parted the Red Sea? Moses. 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 We have... God is sovereign. But he doesn't control the earth. Which is why, one, Jesus is the king. Mm-hmm. 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 Because the earth belongs to man. And so guess what? In order to have a king that ain't going to screw things up, one has to be a human being. But yet there has to be divinity which we are all divine. Oh, ooh, I just got somebody there, didn't I? Yeah, right. It, right, <laughs> right. It. And, and I think you got them just a little while back where you alluded to the, um, where you alluded to Moses did it. God didn't do it. <laughs> you get it right Joshua did it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, oh, Tony, you're saying we have the power. When Jesus was on this earth, he acted from his incarnate self, from mm -hmm. his human being part. Mm -hmm. And he was showing us who we are. And that, and that, by the way, kind of links you to Elijah. I just mentioned Elijah as well. Because the writer of James, James, not, not the writer, James himself in his letter said that Elijah was a man just like us. Yes. Of like passion. But if you go to the scriptures, Elijah encounters Obadiah. And yep. he tells Obadiah, Go and tell your go and tell your leader. Elijah is here. Oh gosh, do you Christian say that? <laughs> <laughs> no, these things contradict the entire Christian paradigm of spiritual codependency. So this is what it is doing. It's contradicting spiritual codependency. Because whilst you're saying, I'm certain Holy Brother Tony has actually heard people say. He heals somebody, and when he's giving a testimony, they say, no, God did it. You, you can't do anything. Let me, let me tell you something. If Holy Brother Tony had responded to any phone call for resurrection, or anybody wanting heal and say, hey, I don't do it. God will do it, and hang up the phone. We will have, to, we will have a few dead people still. And some people still sick. Because if he doesn't actually take the decision and treats that like his personal responsibility to make that happen, nobody will get healed and there'll be no resurrections. Not so? That's exactly right. Because it does not work how Christians... Let me just, let me just be a little more specific here. 
it doesn't work in the way in active Christians think it works. Correct. Because the inactive Christians are the ones that are sitting down there with their theories, trying to sound all pious, while the person still sick. And That's they're inactive for a reason. Exactly. Because the they're taking no responsibility. Zero responsibility. Zero responsibility. And you know what contradicts the entire Westernized paradigm concerning that? If you go back to, to Exodus chapter 6, this is to add value to our holy, holy brother Tony just said. If you go back to Exodus chapter 6, it says, let me read it in way, because they didn't make it up. It's in your Bible. Watch. Just, just listen to this, right? <laughs> I'll read this. Because whilst, oh, whilst Holy Brother Zane is being nice to people and, and giving them the address, I'm not so nice. <laughs> I'll make you look it up. <laughs> That's not, it says here. Verse 13, Exodus 6. Wait, let me start from verse 12. Now, let's start from verse 10. From verse 10 to verse 13. Listen to what it says. And Yahweh speak. I'll say Yahweh as in the Lord, right? And the Lord speak unto Moses, saying, Go in, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, that he let the children of Israel go out of this land. This is, this is what God telling Moses. This is Moses's, this is Moses's response. Tell me if this song familiar. This is to all the listeners. Tell me if this song like you, right? And Moses spake before the Lord, saying, Behold, the children of Israel have not hearkened unto me. How then shall Pharaoh hear me, who am of uncircumcised lips? That song like Nemosa, most of the inactive believers right there, right? Well, I, I can't do it. I, I don't have the power to do that. God have to do it. And here's what God says to Moses. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, and gave them a charge unto the children of Israel and unto Pharaoh king of Egypt to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. A charge. What is a charge? A responsibility. That is your assignment <laughs> as your responsibility yep right there no yes yeah that resonates resonate in their mind <laughs> we need a moment of silence for that to resonate in their mind because whilst they're trying to throw the responsibility back on god we could walk through the scriptures here and show you that god has given this to, to man as a responsibility and that means that if you don't move, nothing is going to take place. Exactly right. If God was sovereign and in charge of everything, then he would have no need to create Adam and tell him, have dominion. That's a double whammy. Because somebody who is in charge of everything doesn't need anybody else to do anything for them. It doesn't need somebody to come or to, de to depend on somebody else to do it, which means the garden of Eden could have been created, and God just sit down there and just admire all the trees and the fruits and the animals. And if that was the case, if God so in charge of everything, then man would not have had the opportunity to make a decision outside of the spirit. He would actually just sit down in the, in the garden perfect because he's programmed. Because God is in charge of everything. If God is in charge of everything, God, he would have approached the tree. And as he reached for the tree, an invisible shield should have come up and say, zoom, don't touch that tree. <laughs> but that would be people's argument is, well, God's not going to get power to all mankind so they can do evil. He did. He did. 100%. And they did evil. <laughs> and once again, look at Elijah. 
it was not uh, God did not ordain the killing of those soldiers or even other prophets of Baal. That was not God ordained. That was Elijah's idea out of fear. No, on all of these, all of these, all of these things in the scriptures actually show you that whether you see Moses, you see Elijah, you see in um you see in um what's the next one? Elisha. All of these guys actually show you that beginning with Moses specifically, that once you are given that charge, any decision that you make in your drive to fulfill that charge is going to be fulfilled because it's, the power is actually given to you. If Elijah decided everybody remain blind for the rest of their life, well, nobody ever say blind for the rest of their life, but just like Elisha who dealt with the Syrian army, Elijah take out 50, Elisha blind the army. All right, here's Tony's wrench time. <laughs> Are you ready for the wrench? Ready for the wrench. Treat in. <laughs> Anna, Nias, and Shapira. People say the Holy Spirit took their lives. No, he did not. Peter took their lives. Peter took, Peter made a decision. It was Peter that cursed them. That was not the Holy Spirit, nor was it God ordained, nor was it being holy. Do you agree with that, holy brother? Peter, as, as I was just saying, Peter, Elijah, Moses, people don't really get, get, get to the understanding that there are, there are two aspects of the name that is unknown in Westernized culture. The first one is that God can speak to you. The second one, nobody in Westernized Christianity functions from. When I say nobody, no denomination functions from that. And this, and no denomination in particular functions from, sorry, all the denominations function from one, which is God has to speak to you. And so that's why they sit down there and they wait. The second half of the name that you see priests and prophets and apostles and Jesus functioning in is the half of the name that actually gives you the authority to make decisions and the spirit follows. That means that you are given. This is why you see Jesus, um, God telling Moses, why are you crying out to me? Because when you take on the name, if you read forward in Exodus 6 into Exodus 7, Moses in Exodus 6, in, at the end of Exodus 6, if you read the chapter, Moses repeats to God, Behold, I am of uncircumcised lips, and how shall Pharaoh hearken unto me? God's response to that in Exodus chapter 7 is, See, I have made thee God to Pharaoh. We in the Westernized will, what you just said there is something in particular that will boggle the mind of the believer because they believe in the idea of God has to tell you everything. Right. And they have no idea that these men function by spiritual self-existence and therefore they can make a decision. This is why the Bible says these signs shall follow you. Because that's speaking from the perspective that you function in the name and you can make your decisions in the, in the pathway to fulfill that. And those decisions are going to be fulfilled. Now, everything that you've seen in the scriptures there, like Peter with Ananias and Sapphira, it has context. But that does not mean that Peter did not make that decision. Right. Now, these guys in particular... Let me just put it outside there that Peter is making this decision. But these guys in particular function by, by scripture. And the scripture is 
and this is this is actually a topic also that people think along the lines of um, along the lines of the things that happen in scripture generally not understanding not understanding a very important factor when it comes to life god represents life but god also represents the protection of life let me say that again eh? god represents life but god also represents the protection of life so for example you read in the new testament in the old testament where on all, this is this is where most people lose 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 the bible because they're not reading the bible in the context of what it is actually saying they're trying to actually make god to be this person that will not make decisions all right so for example you're going in the old testament now sure these men making decisions Is it? Here, all right. I don't know. We That's lost you when it said the signal uh, just cut off. Mm -hmm. They make does not describe the fact that they make the decision. Okay, is when when you cut off. All right. So what I'm what I was saying is I gotta cut out that that, that, that segment, right? Right. So what I was saying was that when they make a decision. They make any decision, yes. And the mere fact that the Spirit follows the decision says a lot as well. And here's the context of this. That God, in the Bible, promotes life. But he also withstands the things that threatens life. So many of the times we see in the Old Testament where, like, there's a good example. In the Old Testament, you have commands by priests and God to go and to take out a nation. Mm -hmm. Now, by the way, it's never the entire nation. That is just, that is just, number one, this is just verbiage of the civilization. That is just war verbiage. Because if you see, if you go to every nation that they say to wipe out, just a few chapters, you see people still talking to people from that nation. Right. Which means it's not everybody in the nation getting wiped out. Number two, Every nation that that is actually that decree is made on are not just nations that were just sitting down there comfortably doing nothing. These people were actually um, terrorists to other nations. They would actually walk into a nation, rape women, take the children as slaves, and take take kill the men and take the and take the children and take the women of the women and the daughters and make harems with them. So because they are eliminating life, when, 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 when God comes up against our nation, he says, take, take out all of them. It, this is not, this is not, this is not a, a scenario of people who, and this is, this, is believer, this is where believers get tied up because believers speak from the comfort of our civilization where we have united nations that could come and stop a man from coming and taking out your nation i mean what going on in, in the middle east right now in ukraine is a is a is, 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 is a is, is, is a topic by itself but we have united nations these are nations that are ruthless nations if you look at the history and if if you don't withstand them they'll come in and they will make slaves of your women and your children and rape all your women and take your women and, and carry them back to have sex with them repeatedly as slaves. So when you see like these decisions being made in the scriptures, it's never innocent, slack decisions. For example, like with Ananias and Sapphira, what's the context of that? This is just to add value to what we're saying here, right? Peter makes the decision 100%, but the spirit follows the decision. Why? Why is the spirit following the decision? Peter says something to them that nobody in the Western and Western eyes will pick up. Peter says, you're not doing this unto man, you're doing it unto God. That line is spoken by Moses in the wilderness. The same thing Moses said. And when it was spoken to Moses in the wilderness, it's because these people became liars in the wilderness. 
and they went around the camp trying to incite people to, re to actually rebel against Moses, either to stone him or to, to abandon Moses in the wilderness and go back to Egypt. And Moses soon responds and says, you're not doing that unto man, you're doing that unto God. And boom, people fall into a pit. And Ananias and Sapphira, when he quotes that, it actually to show that Ananias and Sapphira didn't just innocently do that. The, the mere fact that he quotes that relates what they were doing in the wilderness to them. They were running around the camp. It was speaking Peter and John and trying to get people to rebel against them. So technically, they suffer the same fate of those who did it first because you're sowing into the same spirit, mindset. So the same thing that happened to them is the same thing happened to you. But this is not, you cannot take that and apply this. People, when, when we read that, the same with the spirit moving Ananias and Sapphira, he will not move with a Gentile. Because Ananias and Sapphira, these people memorized Torah, so they know what they're doing. A Gentile never, never memorized scripture. You will never see God move with a Gentile like that. To the Gentiles, when the man in 1 Corinthians 5 was actually sleeping with his father's wife, Paul made the same decision. Hand him over to Satan. But hand him over to Satan mean, didn't, didn't mean death. It meant put him out of the camp. Let him face Rome by himself since he can't respect people and be equitable to the believers. So the, uh, these guys making the decisions, but the decisions in particular are backed up by the Spirit because all of these things have context that we are not taught. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. It makes it, so <laughs> so it, it is necessary for believers to stop the idea that, number one, they're trying to um, demonize God. And number two, the idea that um, that God in particular, and this is something that pervades the Western church, they speak about love so much that they will watch somebody getting beaten in a marriage, abused, sexually abused, and still say God loves you and your husband. You should go back to your husband. What? Right. <laughs> People getting molested and abused, and you saying what? You do, you clearly don't understand what love is. Love means promotion of life. Yes. And if people are actually being uh -huh. abused, even as a soldier, holy brother, you I know as a soldier in your heart you can't see somebody getting abused and stand up there and watch it and say God love you. Why? Why are you doing that? God love you. No, that will get you angry. <laughs> yep. That would get me pretty angry. <laughs> you get angry. And you, will, and, and you are going to take actions. Not that you might. Not that you. And this is a good example right here. Not that the decisions that you're making. You might turn around and say, boy, I should not do that. But when that indignation comes up inside of you. You're going to execute it. To stop what's going on. And because it's being done from that spirit, the spirit behind you. That don't mean you might come and say, boy, maybe I should have made a different decision. <laughs> you understand? But the whole idea of somebody being oppressed is something in particular that if you're a believer, you cannot do that. You cannot see that. Right. You cannot stand up there and see somebody being oppressed like that. So these guys, all of the scripture, it actually is based on people who actually know better and they step into a lack of equity or nations in the Old Testament who were horrific people. These people shouldn't even be born as far as I'm concerned because you are there terrorizing people. You, watch me. Samuel in particular is one, one prophet that actually revealed the context of that. Remember when Saul was told by Samuel to go and eliminate the Amalekites. Now, if you read that, you will say, well, that is a harsh decision, but you have no idea what these Amalekites were doing. And when Paul and Saul did not slaughter the king, Samuel ran a sword through the man after. And Samuel told him, just as your sword has left many women childless, 
so your mother will be childless and cut the man to pieces because it's all based on equity which is love being actually protecting people from being slaughtered they, watch me these nations like um what do you call them babylonians the next one are syrians people don't know how ruthless these people was thinking it's like serpent multiplied by a thousand you know? just like we serpent in the garden on on level nine thousand you know? Assyrians will come into your nation, cut off everybody's head. I mean, <laughs> saw off your head and put it in a hall as decoration for when kings come in to see them. They will come into your nation, rape your women, and tie your hands and feet to four chariots and pull you into four pieces. Second. <laughs> so anyway, that, that's actually what I'm referring to in regards to these guys 100% are making the decisions but the spirit follows because of the mindset that of, 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 um, of what they're doing. They're not innocent. They're actually doing things that they know are actually detrimental. Either they're taking life or they're actually trying to slander the spirit like blasphemy, and they actually face consequences for that. But Gentiles don't have to worry about that because we didn't memorize scripture. That makes Woo! sense? <laughs> that was the Holy Brother. <laughs> <laughs> and with Does, that, we're going to wrap it up. Yeah. Hopefully, we got the point across. It, indeed. God always works through blood Mine. and blood. Yes, 100%. Without it, everything will stay where it is. Without Jesus passing through Jerusalem, nobody would have been healed. So while you're blaming God, why are you still sick? Hmm. He's saying, when are you going to make a decision? And that's what he's saying. And, and, and I will... I'm going to add this to your point. If Jesus is seen as the new, in the new, in the, by the gospel writers as the new Moses, then Jesus in you is the new Moses. Therefore, what was spoken to Moses is spoken to you. And the same thing that Moses told God, I am on, I, I am on circumcised lips. And God said, see, I have made you Elohim to Pharaoh. God is selling you to thee. See, I have made you the son of God or God to Satan, to the sickness, the disease.